Good morning, students. It's been a while, but we are within time because we have only two topics left. And today we're going to look at um, the last one, last but one topic. Um, you know, the calendar has been um, re um, scheduled. So it's now 29th May for us to end lecture. So we can finish within this time frame. So this is about internal audits. Uh, that is specifically IT audit. All right, so uh, you have <coughs> prior knowledge about IT. You have done IT in level three, uh, about auditing. So you have done auditing in level 300. Okay, but then um, let's um, go and see what an auditing is. Auditing, what is auditing? In actual fact, so auditing, we can have various definitions for auditing, but um, from my point of view, auditing is actually a systematic process of objectively obtaining and evaluating evidence, right? So you need to obtain an evidence. Those are key ways that analyze the definition. So evidence that regards assertions. You see, management normally makes assertions about the credibility of financial reports financial statements actually, which has to be presented to um, external parties, such as stockholders. So assertions about economic actions. Okay, so that is actually what the financial statement will come from. And events to ascertain the degree of correspondence hmm, between those assertions and established um, criteria and communicating the results to interested parties or users. So this is a very long definition, but the key words, there are certain key words that underpin the definition. For example, when we say systematic process, you see, so conducting an audit is a systematic and logical process. You see, that applies to all forms of information system audit. Remember that information system audit, just as we had um, uh, IT control, we have information system control, which is a subset of the general control. The same applies to information system audit. It's also a subset of the general audit. You see, so this definition actually en encapsulates all the forms of audit. For example, external audit, internal audit and then information system audit or IT audit uh, to be specific. So the definition embodies or captures all the uh, uh, various uh, types of audits. So uh, there must be a systematic, actually auditing is about a systematic process. So that is why the definition says that it's a systematic process of objectively, you see, obtaining and evaluating evidence so when you are uh, you want to obtain evidence all the things about obtaining an evidence against management assertions all right so in the information system audit we also apply this principle okay so this is important in the it environment all right then again we can also see that there is a key word known as what management assertions and audit objectives you see the organization's um I, I financial statements you see re must reflect a set of management assertions about the financial health of the entity you see, so that is what actually management is reporting and we want the auditor to assess the um, the credibility of the financial statement, whether the financial statements has been prepared in accordance with established criteria, whether it falls within generally accepted accounting principles, and so on and so forth. So the task of the auditor is to determine whether the financial statements are fairly presented, right? And then how do the auditor go about that or accomplish this 
objective. Eh? The auditor must establish what we call audit objectives. You see, so first of all, you must establish your audit objectives. Then you have to design the procedure that you have to follow. Mm? So design the procedures and then you gather evidence that co collaborates. The evidence must collaborate with uh, the, or it must refute management assertion. So there are two issues here. Either the evidence that you are gathering collaborates or refutes management assertion. Another key uh, words or phrase that we can find in the definition is about obtaining evidence. You see, so auditors actually, they seek evidence, what we call evidential um, <clears throat> matter, right? Matters that are, are based on evidence. That also collaborates uh, management assessments in the IT environment. Okay, so this involves gathering evidence relating to reliability, you see, the reliability of computer control. So when you say IT audit, then we refer to auditing that, that relates to the computer environment. So computer control, as well as the contents of database that the computer programs have processed. So the data, um, the information that the computer generates, and this is very important uh, in the in organizations because these days um, organizations actually process financial statements using information technology. So that is the internal processes that take place within the organization. So that is why the auditing of the IT is very important. Okay, so here, evidence is collected by performing tests of controls. We did controls and we said that controls and auditing or internal audit and then internal control, they are the foundations for good corporate governance. So if your internal control systems is weak, you don't perform uh, effective auditing and you have material weaknesses within your control system, then you are going to have poor corporate governance practice. You remember in our last lecture, we cited the collapse of various banks that has occurred recently in our environment, you see, as an example. And all these problems have been alluded, alluded to uh, poor corporate governance systems. Okay, so evidence is actually collected by a performing tests of controls, you see, which must establish whether internal controls are functioning properly, you see. Sometimes the controls are there, but we don't implement them. For example, procurement of uh, goods and other services. Mm -hmm. We don't even follow in the public sector, for example, we have the procurement act, but do we even follow due process in our procurement activities, you see? And then substantive tests, which determine whether um, accounting database fairly reflects the organization's transactions and account balances. Now, this is actually um, concerned about the IT audit. Okay, so in effect, we have these, um, key ways that I'm just explaining to you, uh, which involve the auditing processes in general. Then we also have what we call ascertaining the degree of correspondence. You, you remember that this one we said uh, in, the, in the definition, we, we indicated that the objective is to ascertain the degree of correspondence with established criteria, you see? And normally, the auditor must determine whether weaknesses in internal controls and misstatement, that is material misstatements, uh, it can be found, you see, in transactions and account balances, especially. So when there are misstatements, 
uh, and that is quite material in account balances, then your internal control system is what weak. You see, so that is about your ascertainment. You, you are ascertaining the degree of correspondence with established criteria. So in an IT environment, how do we describe this? That is the issue of what technology and a, a sophisticated internal control structure. You see, in an IT environment, the technology and the internal control structure are quite sophisticated. So that even further complicates this decision. So you can see that the auditing of IT is a key to every organization. They will look at the last keyword. We say you have to communicate your results. So auditors must communicate the results of their test. You see, so it's about you are testing uh, the system and then you obtain results. That is why sometimes we employ some mathematical models such as regression. Uh, we can use regression to find evidence that this is significant because you might collect data. Normally, auditors do this by sampling because you may have a whole lot of um, data that you cannot actually uh, contact all of them. So you, you just rely on a sample. And then you may perform some kind of analysis, such as regression, to find out whether. So we we'll have a regression in this um, lecture. So auditors must communicate the results of their tests hmm, to interested parties or users. Now, independent auditors, who are known as independent auditors, external auditors, because they must be independent from the organization. See, for internal auditors, they are also they must also perform independent activities uh, with management. The internal auditor must also be independent. Okay, so independent auditors they must also render a report to the uh, auditing committee. If you are an independent, you are an external auditor, your report is submitted to the auditing committee, or which the auditing committee is actually a, a component of the board of directors. You understand, or it can also be submitted to stakeholders or stockholders, right, of the company. So the audit report contains um, normally, among other things, the key um, component that the audit report contains about expression of opinion, that is audit opinion. We know that the auditor must express his or her opinion about the fairness of the financial statements, whether the financial statements actually reflect the organization's activities as at that point in time. So IT auditors often, this one is about the non-audit aspect, right? But if it's an IT audit, then they also communicate their findings to the internal and external auditor for them to integrate these findings into the non-ID and uh, non-IT aspect of the audit, you see. So for uh, such auditing, we actually communicate it to the internal auditor or the external auditor. Okay, so now let's go back. Now let's then um, look at what we are supposed to achieve in this lecture, right? So um, first we have to appraise the importance of the audit function. You see, appraise the importance of the audit function to good corporate governance. We all know that corporate governance is actually um, the basis for, I mean, uh, internal control and internal auditing. They are the basis for corporate governance. So if you have a good corporate governance system, then your internal control system must be solid. Right, it must be devoid of all material weaknesses. It must be devoid of all material weaknesses. All right. Then explain the importance of the financial audit. In actual fact, external auditors they perform financial audit. That is to ascertain whether the financial statements they are. Uh, Management to actually make assertions about the financial statement. So to ascertain whether um, there is 
the financial statement that management is giving to users um, is, is it reflects the organization's activities. In actual fact, you see, external data, they are for external parties of the organization, such as um, stockholders, creditors, government agencies, and so on. Because um, we say the uh, auditor provides what we call assurance services. See, so you are going to rely, you are relying on the auditor's uh, report and make a decision. So that is the auditor, in a way, is providing assurance to you that the uh, information that you are making is, is of uh, less material weaknesses. Are you okay? So there are two, there are two key ways that we need to understand when we are talking about auditing, what we, we call attestation, and then what we call assurance services. We'll come to that. Then you should evaluate the functions of an information system audit. So information system audit is actually a subset of the general audit. And then we determine if a variable is statistically significant in a regression analysis. Okay, as I've indicated previously. All right, so um for our first objective we say corporate governance you see corporate governance we have done um it governance and we know that um it actually specified the procedures the rules the regulations governing the use of computers mm? both uh, physical uh, components and then the softwares the information that the computer generates how information are distributed to users and so on. So corporate governance actually, as we all know, um, the, the framework, right? It is a framework within every organization. So uh, we know that um, corporate governance is governed by several legislations, um, such as we have the um, company's code, we have the SEC, uh, the Ghana Stock Exchange, and so on. So there should be some rules, relationships, systems, and, proce and processes within and by which authority is exercised and controlled within organizations. See? So if these rules, processes, regulations, and so on are not comply with or they are not observed, then we don't have an effective corporate governance system. And this is what actually uh, leads to most organizations uh, collapsing. For example, in the year 2000, we heard of giant companies such as Aaron, Wellcome and Co being rocked by financial scandals. So all these could be as a result of weak corporate governance. So it, it encompasses the mechanisms by which companies and those in control are held to account, you see. So those in especially the board of directors. So it is a requirement yeah, that if you want to be listed as a public entity, then you should have a board, you see. And the members that constitute the board is very important. Even some board don't, don't even have a member who is whose background is accounting, you see. And that is, meanwhile, uh, corporate governance actually also dwells on accounting because you are, you are going to um, prepare financial statements to uh, users, you see. The auditing or assurance function provides the board and management with important insight into the organizational environment. So actually, when we talk about corporate governance, then it's about specifying the risk. You see, there are several risks that are associated with the organization's activities. See, so you need to identify the risk. Risk analysis actually incorporates an overview of the organization's internal control. You see, so that is why we have controls. So we can have fraudulent risk, risk that are fraudulent in nature. 
So there must be control, especially with IT environment. You see, we have programmers, we have maintenance personnel, we have data processing personnel. And um, if you don't put in control measures, said that um, we, we even studied these things uh, previous in our previous lecture. You see that transactions that are, uh, they, they have of different uh, processing nature. That is incompatible transactions. You see, uh, or if they are compatible, they must be segregated and so on. Okay, so we say that the risk analysis incorporates an overview of the organization's internal control. Now, during the review of controls, the auditor attempts to understand the organization's policies. You see, when you are reviewing the control, eh, you are reviewing the internal control of the organization. That's where you understand the organization's policies, the organization's practices, and the organization's structure. You see, so the risk aspect must be taken into account if and that is a key because if uh, organizations you don't actually um, um, follow the risk processes and uh, activities and practices that are more risky you see then you could have a weak corporate governance system all right now so risk management system it is the responsibility of the board right and the audit committee the audit committee is a subset of the board so it's part of the board and then management so these three they need to define the objectives the scope and the priorities of the organization you see formulate overall risk management classification what are the various risks in terms of it especially there are several risks that are associated with IT operation. Even uh, currently, you see, uh, we are doing online teaching. So we are having some kind of risk, some challenges. People can hack into the system. People can, um, I mean, just enter. You don't know how they manage. You see, these are all risks. So you need to tighten security measures you see, to prevent uh, other people from entering the system so understand business life cycles we know the life cycle business process we know it and critical service success factors you see so all these are very important as far as risk management system is concerned and then identify and classify risk okay so like i was saying risk is a component of um, corporate governance right um, we have what you call risk management um, system or yeah we uh, when you talk about the um, control frameworks for example we talk about the COSO control framework or you talk about the COVID control framework um, we also have enterprise risk management framework you see which actually um, directs or if organizations adopt such framework it will also enable you institute proper risk measures into the system okay so the risk management system the auditor mm, must have an assurance related to and uh, the access probability of risk mm, and potential consequences compare and con and analyze risk tolerance and mitigation strategies so the auditor the audit assurance you see because when we say assurance we have what we call attestation which is actually an engagement in which a, a practitioner an auditor you, you should be when you are practicing that it means you have attained i mean you are a cp what we call the certified public accountant Mm -hmm. So a practitioner is engaged, you see, to issue or where he does issue a written communication mm -hmm. that expresses a, a conclusion about the reliability 
of a written assertion that that is the responsibility of another party you see that is what we call an assertion and an assertion must have some requirements you see or sorry attestation so attestation services must require a written assertion and then a practitioner's written report you see so these are requirements of an attestation then it must also require the formal establishment of measurements hmm? criteria there should be a measurement criteria or the description of um uh, that you must or you must describe uh, the measurement in the presentation you see okay but when you talk of assurance services or what we normally call um advisory services are you okay when we say advisory or assurance they are the same and they are normally the professional services designed to improve the quality of information you see both financial and non-financial so the decision maker is to rely on this financial or non-financial information so the auditor is providing assurance that the financial statements are free of material error you see there are there are no mistake misstatements in the financial statement that they can be relied upon for effective decision making see, so both financial and non-financial that decision makers use okay now assurance services are intended normally to help clients hmm, make better um, decisions by improving information you see so that is what assurance actually um, does so evaluate existing and new controls uh, well where was i reading uh, when i got to the assurance okay so the whole thing is about audit assurance related audit assurance related so when you talk about risk management then um that is when the auditor assures you you see so that reduces the level of risk so the auditor actually must evaluate existing and new controls cost and effectiveness of monitoring procedures and also assess expose uh, report position and then recommend insurance where appropriate okay now what is the role of the auditor we have mentioned three classes of um, we can have um, the auditors in terms of internal audit function external audit function and then we have the audit committee what are their functions mm -hmm. or the role that they are supposed to play okay so um you can distinguish between internal auditor and then the external auditor now the external auditor actually um he audits financial statements so we actually refer to the external auditor as or external auditing as financial audit you see and financial audit is actually an attestation performed now you know what attestation is so attestation that has been performed by an expert so that this aspect is what we are referring to as the auditor so you are an expert you see who expresses an opinion regarding the um, presentation hmm? because uh, the company is presenting financial statements about the the state of activities of the organization so uh, uh, regarding the presentation of financial statements so the audit objective is associated with um, the presentation of financial statements in particular that in all material respect mm? so the statements are fairly presented in particular in all material respect that the statements are fairly respected uh, presented now the external um, the external auditor 
Mm? It's an independent auditor, you see, and is a certified public accountant. So normally we have uh, auditing firms such as uh, Pricewaterhouse, NS and Young, and so on and so forth. These are the big, um, the, when you talk about the big six and so on, uh, the big three or the big six. And then the SEC also requires all publicly uh, traded companies um, to be subject uh, annually, uh, to be subject to annual financial statements report. See, so they have to prepare annual financial statements report. When you are listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange, then it's a requirement that you prepare financial statements annually. See, so CPAs represent the interests of outsiders, as I've already indicated, uh, such as stockholders, such as um, creditors, such as um, uh, government agencies, and then the general public, <coughs> you see. So this is because general evidence in the, uh, the public confidence uh, is actually in the reliability of the company's uh, internal uh, produce financial statement, what the company has actually produced internally. See, so that also rests directly on the statements that an independent auditor evaluates. You see, so that is about the external auditor. Now let's look at the internal auditor. So what are the functions of the internal um, auditor. So as we all know, the internal auditor actually um, conducts, also conduct financial audits, right? So the internal auditor also um, conducts financial audits. And then he or she examines an operating compliance, hmm? whether the operating system is compliant um, with organizational policies. You see, because he is within. So he is actually ensuring that um, the organization or the operations or the activities of the organization um, fall in line with the organization's activities. Right. And also, the internal auditor also review the organization's compliance, you see, with legal obligations, whether um, the organization if you actually prepare financial statements in accordance with um, legal regulations, uh, some uh, whether it falls within um, financial international financial uh, reporting standards, those kind of framework or generally accepted accounting principles and so on. And again, he also evaluate operational efficiency you see and detect um, and pursue fraud the internal data must detect and also pursue fraud with the firm and then finally the internal data also conducts an it audit you see so normally the report of the it audit is reported to the external data to be integrated into the non-auditing aspect of the organization now what about the um, audit committee? But you know, uh, normally the internal auditors, they must, they have to cooperate with the external auditor. ZB, this is because um, the external auditors performing financial um, audits, they, they charge, you see, they, there is audit fee associated with their activities. So this is done to achieve audit efficiency and also reduce audit fees. So for example, um, we can have a team of internal auditors who are performing tests of computer controls. Yes, that is a, 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 an information system audit. So uh, they are, we can have a number of them, you see, but they are being supervised by a single external auditor so that that will reduce the audit fees. See, but where the auditor, the external auditor cannot um, rely on the internal auditor's um, activities. 
because normally external auditors they rely on the internal auditors reports you see to also conduct their tests you see so that normally reduces the audit fees okay so audit committee are actually part of the board of directors you see and they also have a, a big role to play in uh, <clears throat> ensuring that all activities are properly uh, operated in line with the company's objectives okay so that has brought us then of the first objective now the second objective says that we should explain the importance of financial audit i think in somewhere along the line we have explained financial audit, but then that is actually the examination of financial reports hmm? consisting of the balance sheet you know that every every uh, financial statements are made up of um, i think four or five different financial reports the income statement and then the statement of financial position which we normally call the balance sheet um, the statement of cash flows right statement of cash flows uh, and then the uh, news to the accounts and so on okay so just to that is what we call a, a financial audit you see so you examine the financial report and the financial report consists of all these uh, statements so balance sheet income statement statement of changes in equity a cash flow statement and then notes comprising a summary of um, significant account policies you see and other explanatory notes now to form a view so at the end of the day um, the auditor will just express an opinion about the integrity or the reliability of that financial state because these are information that users are going to rely on to make decisions you see so that is an assurance services that the uh, auditor is going to provide in this and this is normally a function of an external auditor but the internal auditor also performs financial audit right okay but actually we normally associate external auditors function as with financial audit. so to form a view independently of the organization you see so the financial the external auditor is an independent um, body from the organization he has nothing in common with the organization so he has to report as he has what from his findings so from the organization as to the reliability that information you see all right so that is about financial audit but um i can also give you um some financial audit definition um we have some other definition about financial audit we say is that um, uh, an external um, auditor so we normally see external financial audit right so an external financial audit right is an attestation attestation i've already explained attestation performed by an expert you see so the external auditor is an independent auditor and is a certified public accountant <clears throat> okay so you remember that so um i need not go further so let's go to the next slide <clears throat> so um financial audit and the accounting information system <clears throat> all right so financial reports you see because the accounting information system actually processes the data that generates the internal um, um, financial statements or in other words it processes the data internally to generate the financial statements that the external data has to work, audit so financial reports you see the external accounts are derived from summarizing the data gathered and captured and processed and stored in the account information system you see so that is why and the account information system actually represent the it you see so that is why we have what an it audit because the it also comprises a whole lot of um, components we have the physical aspects 
and so on. We'll come and look at the structure of an IT audit very soon. And then for the auditor to, to form an opinion on the veracity of the financiers, <clears throat> they must have confidence in the integrity of the account. Is it so? Normally, external auditors rely on the internal auditor to conduct their uh, activities. So if the external auditor can confidently rely on the integrity of the account information system, for example, then <clears throat> he will base it on that and then issue uh, his opinion. You see, and that also go a long way to reduce the audit fees that the external auditor will charge. So how do they do that confidence? Okay. Um, these days, we are uh, companies are operating under several um, legislations, such as the uh, Cyber Osley Act, which was promulgated in 2002, following the collapse of giant companies such as Aeron, Wellcom, and Co. in the US. You see, so most organizations rely on the Act and then operate. For example, US legis legislation, but with some applications to Ghana. You see, so if you are adopting international financial reporting standards, then obviously you'll be adopting some of these uh, um, legislations to guide your activities. So, so it assesses an indirect influence as an uh, exemplar of best practice. So you all know what the cyber obviously artists read about it and uh, has a strong moral influence reflecting the big four audit practices worldwide, you see. So that is how um, companies can actually rely on um, if only your company has also followed or has adopted the act in running its uh, activities. So actually section 302, or is it section 303? And then section 404 specifies what auditors must do and what they must not do. This is so mandatory appointment of an audit committee and then an internal control report that must include the management must report that the internal control system uh, is of no material weaknesses and then even if uh, the system has been designed by a third party it must be reported by management this is because uh, the internal control system is what management and uh, the external data is going to rely on to issue an opinion statement so a statement of management's responsibility for establishing and maintaining adequate internal control, you see, over financial reporting. This is a requirement of the Cyber Aussie Act, which we normally re refer to as the SOX, you see. So the Act specified that management must report, or uh, in their report, they must specify that the internal control system is of, uh, I mean, indicate weaknesses in the internal control system so that all uh, processes are based on management's responsibility. Management assessment of the effectiveness of the company's internal control over financial reports, you see. And then a statement that um, has issued an assessing report or management assessment of the company's internal control over financial reporting. So the sex act, uh, the yeah the Cyber Osley Act actually specifies that management must make these statements in their report. Now, very much makes directors and senior management accountable. You see, because previously these were not there. You see, so uh, if you have you are going according to the Cyber Osley Act then you must comply with these uh, prescriptions. All right. Now, objective three says that we need to evaluate the functions of an information system audit. Now, what is an information system audit? It's a subset of the general audit, right? Information system audit is a subset of the general audit. 
And uh, that actually comprises the technology or the computer aspect of auditing. You see, so um, let's look at information system audit, what we normally call the IT audit or information technology audit. And that focuses actually on the computer based aspect of an organization's information system. You see, so this normally include um, one, assessing the proper implementation, mm, operation, and control of computer um, resources. The computer normally has several resources, you see, physical and non-physical programs, um, data, and so on. So uh, it must actually involve the organization's information system uh, assessing the proper implementation, uh, operation, and control of the computer resources. Now, it actually also is a typically a significant component of all external and internal audit. You see, per the definition that we gave from the beginning, I said that that definition encapsulates or embodies all the types of audits both internal audits, external audits, and then the IT audit. So when we say um, um, IT audit, then it follows certain structure. Are you okay? So let me go to the next slide. So we say that an information system audit, right, is part of the overall. So it's part, you see, the general audit, just as we have IT controls as a subset. So it's part of the overall audit process and it's important for good corporate governance, you see. So it is defined as well. The process of collecting and evaluating evidence to determine whether a computer system, that is information system, safeguards access, maintains data integrity, achieves organizational goals effectively, and then consume resources efficiently. Well, we can have several definitions. Are you okay? But the natural fact, when we say information system or the then it's, it's all about the computer based aspect of the organization's information system. Okay, so now, um, IT audit. Okay, before we come to the risk based approach, uh, we have three types of risk we have the inherent risk, we have the control risk, and then we have the um, detection risk. We'll look at that very soon. But then before we come to that, let's look at the structure of an IT audit. Now, generally, uh, IT audit is divided into three um, phases. Are you okay? So three phases. We can have the audit planning, because in every audit, you need to, the first uh, thing to do is to plan. And then we test controls, mm -hmm. test of controls. And then you do what we call substantive testing. Okay, now we can demonstrate this. Let me show you um, how this can be achieved. Um, how this can be achieved. Uh, let me just illustrate it uh, diagrammatically. And uh, we 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 have. Let's say if you have. Uh, uh, let's say you are starting, you start, let's say this is your start, mm, with the starting point. So you have an arrow, okay. Uh, no, let me, I need to have started from the top because I'll need a space. So, see this is my starting point. Um, the start. So start. Start. Okay. So my start. I've written the start. Okay. So you have your arrow. 
then um okay so this is then another arrow that is if you want to conduct um an it audit then you can follow this So three boxes now. So this one will be the audit planning, right? So I'll write AP audit planning um, fees. So APP or let's say AP audit plan. And then this one will be you can insert it because I'll find difficult to write. So this one will be a review of organizations, policies, organizations, um, practices, and structures. You see this box. Then that will move on to a review um, of general controls so here you are reviewing the controls so you have general controls and then you also have what application controls you remember we did this in our previous lecture so you review the general controls and then you review the application controls as well and then here you have you you test for your plan so plan tests of controls and then substantive uh, testing procedures that you're going to adopt Okay, so this will then move all the way to another box. Mm -hmm. So when you are done, then you come to the test of control phase. You see, so test of control phase. So you have your arrow. Okay, so, so this will be the test of control phase. Mm -hmm. So test of control phase. And so this box will be, you perform test of controls in this box. Then you move to, you move to another box. You move to another box, which is um, your evaluate, then you evaluate test con, uh, results. When you have done your test controls, then here you evaluate um, test results right you evaluate the results and then you determine the degree of reliance of control so the degree by which you can rely on the controls that will be determined that is you evaluate and then you finally move to another three boxes like this okay so and this one will be the substantive test phase so substantive test phase. And in that phase two, you go by three um, activities. So the first one is that you perform substantive tests. You perform substantive tests. And the second one is that you evaluate um, res results and then issue audit reports, you see. So you know that in the auditing, at the end of the day, you must issue a report. And the final will be the report, um, audit report. Okay, so this is the, the structure of uh, IT audit, which actually also follows the uh, general audit. Okay, so let's go to our slide. Um, let's go to our slide. Okay, so um, we have gotten the definition. Okay, so that is the the the, the actually the structure of um, the audit, the IT audit. Now, base a uh, risk based approach to the information system audit. You see, so there are some risk three uh, three key risks that we can identify. Um, I said we have inherent risk, we have control risk, and then we have um, what we call detective risk. Okay, so each of these risks, we want to look at them, but um, I want us to look at the audits 
uh, structure. I think we have. Uh, okay, so let's look at the various risk. Let's look at the various risk. Now, the first one we say is uh, inherent risk. Normally, there are some risk that even the auditor cannot or has no control over it. You see, and they will comprise the reporting of the financial statement. Because, for example, if let's say um, accounts receivable is about 10 million cities, right? And then uh, this receivable is made up of um, debtors, let's say five debtors, each of them owe uh, 2 million. So that will total the 10 million, right? And the company knows that um, these um, debtors cannot pay. So those, um, those monies are actually going to be bad debt, you see. The company cannot say it will not it will report uh, these ones as bad debt. You see, so they are inherent. It comes to the point that such um, such uh, transactions are risk that are inherent in the financial statement. Okay, now. So the audit risk components, we have three as I mentioned. So here we say that relying on risk along with an organized, uh, along with an understanding of internal and operational controls and knowledge of the organization. So here we can have three types of risk. Okay, so I said inherit. And it's quite susceptible. This is also susceptibility of an audit area to an error, you see, in a way that could be material. Are you okay? So inherent risk is normally associated with the unique characteristics of the business or industry of the client. You see, firms uh, in declining industries have greater inherent risk so firms that are in industry that are declining, they have inherent risk than firms in stable or thriving industries. So like the example that I was given, you see, so the organization will not find it proper to report the, those data that they are going to be bad. Okay, so susceptibility of an audit area to an error in a way that could be material. Now, individually or an or in a, in in combination with other errors, assuming no relation related internal control. So here, um, this risk could be very low if we we have computers that are standalone; they are not networked and they are not used for any purpose. You see, then you cannot experience this type, but it will be high when we have operating system security due to regular changes mm, to operating systems and programs. Okay, then control risk. Um, this is actually about the likelihood that the control structure is flawed, you see, uh, because controls are either absent or inadequate. So when you don't have enough controls, they will call them the control risk. So inadequate to prevent or detect errors in the accounts. You see, so we don't have controls that actually detect or prevent errors in the accounts. And the, the, the system will just process it. So there is that an error that could occur in an audit area and could be material individually or in combination with other errors, you see, could not be prevented or detected and corrected on a timely basis by the internal control system. So this is all about the control system. Now, where is it low? Low risk with computerized data validation procedures is low due to the consistent application of the process. But when it is high, 
And when um, the manual reviews of computer logs due to the volume of data, right, then we'll, we'll describe it as a high risk. Then the detection risk, um, the risk, when you talk about detection risk, then we are talking about the risk that auditors are willing to accept mm, um, that errors not detected or prevented by the control structure will also not be detected by the auditors. So this one will say that the risk that the information system auditors subs substantive procedures will not detect, you see, so they are accepted by the auditor. An error that could be made could be material individually in combination with other errors. So this one to when identify a lack of disaster recovery plan, then we say it's, it's what low. But then when identifying breaches of security due to the volume of locks and all their availability, for example, the full year, then we say the risk is high. So in the, in the computer environment, we can experience these three types of risk. Now, what are the auditing tools for? We, we have talked about the internal control system framework, and especially with uh, when you talk about the COSO framework, that's for the control for general controls, right? But when you talk about the COBIT, that is for uh, information system control. So that is a framework that is employed in the form. But we, we have what we call computer auditing tools and technology and techniques known as CATS. So CATS stands for computer auditing and application tools, right? Now, internal control framework. Okay, the COSO and the COBIT are examples of control frameworks. So the COSO for financial controls and the COBIT for IT controls, as I've already indicated. So computer auditing tools and techniques known as CATS. So they are tools used to extract and analyze client data. We can also have these tools available, right, to the auditor. Um, have the potential to enhance audit effectiveness, you see, but research suggests not widely used. Well, so you can conduct a study to ascertain why the CAT is not widely used. All right, but the CAT actually follows some kind of methodologies. We have the testing using uh, test data. You see, so we just sample uh, test, sample of test trans transactions data and processes. Then integrated test facility, use of embedded audit software. Then simpler approach is the integrated test facility where customer numbers, inventory numbers, and supplier numbers are allocated for the auditor use, auditor's use, okay. So these are all procedures anyway, they are just the methodologies that are employed in the CAT. Mm -hmm. Embedded audit software and then generalized audit software. These are all methodologies that the CAT adopts. Okay, so auditing analysis, the study of test outcomes, mm -hmm. interview notes and documentations obtained from the audit in the field. So aspect of interest here is the evaluation of the internal control system. So normally the auditor must report you see, to uh, interested parties. And in your report, you might have conducted some analysis. Are you okay? So you need to evaluate the internal control system. That is data entry and data input. We have discussed this in our previous uh, 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 lecture that um, the control processes that encapsulate the information system, right from the data entry to the information generation stage. So we have the data entry and input controls, processing controls, output controls, and the e-commerce controls, etc. You see, so the e-commerce actually focuses on ensuring effective internal controls are in place in order in the modern environment because e-commerce is about you know um, performing transactions online. And if there are not enough control measures, um, we can have ineffective um, transactions. So 
application in uh, in specific internal controls we, we have two forms of um, internal controls in, in relation to the it we have the we have done that already we have the general controls and then we have the application so specific we have the technology focus on internal controls we are looking at the controls that are associated with the technology you see logical access control and eh? password and some code and others database controls physical environment controls storage and then chain controls so these are all controls that are associated with the computer staff you see those who actually program mm, programmers we have uh, information system pro uh, data processes we have maintenance queue and so on all right and then we now move on to our last objective whether a, a variable is statistically significant in a regression analysis okay so this is also part of the auditing function you can use statistical model to determine whether a variable is what statistically significant now let's let me take you back to our writing board and then uh, illustrate something but before that i have to i think erase all this mm, so just give me <clears throat> some a moment for me to erase um, this model regression you are 400 right and i'm sure some of you might have been doing a project work or <clears throat> long as if you are doing a quantitative study um, some of you could employ regression so regression actually we have what we call simple regression and then we have what we call multiple regression so regression involves two types of variables right we have what we call the dependent variable which we normally denote by y in the, in the equation we denote it by y and then the independent variables so normally we use regression to establish i think you did regression in your quantitative method so you know the basis so we use regression to establish the relationship that exists between two or more variables so we have y is equal to alpha zero plus plus alpha one alpha one x one so alpha one x one so when you have let's say one independent variable uh, in the model and this one we call it a model because we have not um, substitute the values for x and y sorry for alpha zero and alpha one then we add the <clears throat> what we call the stochastic term so when it is only one independent variable then it's a simple regression okay but when you have more than one independent variable then you have multiple regression so assuming we have a multiple regression so x2 like this and then we introduce the stochastic term or what we call the error term okay, okay. so as it is it's a model but when you substitute the values for alpha alpha zero alpha one and then alpha two sorry you see and then this one will go missing and then they, uh, they substitute this one then we have what we call regression equation so we can use this model to predict y value based on what the values of x1 and x2 but when you have the model and then uh, the equation you have the values of uh, the alpha zero alpha one alpha two in place so that gives you equation so you can use it to predict y value for a given value of what x1 or x2 but normally we want to test 
to find out whether the change in y is caused by x1 or is caused by s2 or is caused by both of them because s1 can be in the model but it is playing no role you see s2 can be in the model but it's playing no role so normally to to find out whether s1 or s2 um, contributes to the changes we conduct what you call the t test you see and you know how to conduct hypothesis tests there are four stages right you, you formulate your hypothesis and then you determine what you call the test statistic mm -hmm. and then you have your critical value that is the alpha and the alpha value right that is what we call the level of significance if you are testing at one percent significance level level of significance is actually um, the maximum probability within which you the researcher you like to commit a type one error you know the difference between type one error and type two error see, so you have your alpha and then you determine your critical value which you'll be reading from tables statistical tables or if it's about the p-value and of course if you are using a software then you don't go through this the software is just a bottom of a click it gives you the report as we will see it in the in the um on the slide yeah okay so i need not waste time in taking you through all this but just as a recap so when you go to the slide you see then an example can be like this um we have what we call multivariate data analysis methods means of statistical analysis to establish relationship between independent and or dependent variables so i indicated earlier that we have two forms of variables that are associated with regression analysis and a type of cause and effect relationship so if you want to know what is causing the changes in the dependent variable and two types method two types of methods independence and independence so we are interested in the dependence okay so we also have what we call the multiple regression analysis of ordinary least squares um, ols is actually a, met a method you see that we can use to um, analyze or compute or estimate a particular data for example if you are using a scale questionnaire scale questionnaire is where you have labeled your responses by numbers and uh, let's say one one is what uh, <clears throat> strongly disagree two and uh, disagree three maybe neutral four agree five strongly agree if you have collected data based on the design questionnaire of this nature you cannot use the OLS. you see then you need to use what we call factor analysis and so on so regression is one such and uh, dependence method OLS is one of the methods we can use and it examines the relationship between one dependent variable and multiple independent variables you see so when you have only one dependent variable then you have a simple regression so if you have multiple uh, independent variables such as x1 x2 x3 and s4 so on and so on then you have a multiple regression okay so an example it will be like this for example you can see that we have just in time practices we have uh, total quality practices we have supply management practices the arrows are all pointing to uh, more manufacturing performance on the um, is it deliver okay manufacturing performance on time delivery delivered on time delivered okay so in this case you see the manufacturing performance on time deliver depends on these three independent variables you see so here your manufacturing performance will be the dependent variable y and all this one will be xs so this will let's say just in time practice will be x1 this one will be x2 this one will be x3 so it means that your manufacturing performance on on time delivery y will be equal to alpha zero which is a constant plus um just in time which is x1 so plus alpha one x1 plus alpha 2 s2 for quality total quality practices and then plus alpha 3 x3 for supply management practices and then plus your uh, error term or stochastic term you see so when you have your data so it means you must have data assuming you have drawn the data 
and each of them has uh, data points of 100. You see, 100. So you have uh, on your SPSS or on your Excel. I think the output we have here is Excel output. Are you okay? We, we, this is not SPSS, this is an Excel output. So the data is four columns for the dependent variable one and then the independent variables three of them. So just you go to your um, Excel sheet and then you compute. So this is the output to give you. So here you can see that you have the coefficient here, intercept, you see, and then you have a standard error, and then you have the T statistic, and then you have the P value, and then the lower um, um, confidence interval and then the upper. Okay, so um, the regression, the residual, and then the total. This is, the, this is what we call OLS. You see, uh, ordinary least squares comprises the sum of squares and the, the total sum of squares and so on. But this is how you deduce your equation. Your intercept is um, the, the, the intercept is uh, 40, is it 43 point something? You see the T statistic. Um, this one is ANOVA, analysis of variance. Okay, so here the output we have been given. Uh, we have the regression statistics. Um, ANOVA. Yeah, so the ANOVA actually is about the um, the the various. Um, I think this output is not related to the what the the, the information that we have to use. It's not related to the manufacturing uh, what. Let's go to the slide. Um, it's not related to uh, manufacturing performance on on time delivery, and then supply management. It's not related to this. This is just an example that you can use to formulate. But then this is also a, a, an example. Uh, to show you how the output is. So this is our sales, you see, so sales. So the coefficient here is, um, the figures are very difficult to read anyway. So, yeah, the, the, so you formulate your equation based on the output and then you conduct a test for the individual independent variables to find out whether they are significant, you see. So if the individual independent variable is significant that one the hypothesis formulation is is just you say that um if you are let's say conducting a test for x1 which is the independent variable s1 let's say for just in time process which represents the independent variable x1 then you say that the coefficient of that variable is beta one or alpha one so Hypothesis will be that beta one is equal to zero. And then your alternate hypothesis will be that beta one does not equal to zero. Are you okay? So you know that your hypothesis is normally made up of the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. So if at the end of the day, you could not um, reject uh, the, the beta one is equal to zero and you accept the beta one that's not equal to zero. Normally it's a two-tailed test, right? Then you conclude that your variable is significant, you see. But if it is equal to zero, then it's not significant, even though it may have a non-zero value in the model, but it is not contributing to the dependent variable. So that is the, the nature of the test. Anyway, this is just um, by the way. So all we want you to understand is that you the um, this is also part of the auditing process, right? Okay. So that brings us to the end of um, today's lecture. Now we have the last lecture, which is about um, ethics 
and then uh, fraud that we look at. So I'll get back to you in due course. Okay, so have a nice day.